it's Saturday. Uh, this week I've been getting up pretty early. And getting an hour or two in the fab lab before work each day. So I've mostly been focusing on 3D printing uh, some of the new designs for the chair before I go full scale with any of them. So I'll get up, I'll bike in to the fab lab. I'll uh, start a 3D print. Then I'll head to work and at lunchtime I'll bike back and I'll pick that 3D print up. Then I'll start another one, go back to work, bike back to the fab lab after work and then pick up the 3D print. So I've been getting two 3D prints done every day and that allows me to see what the new designs are going to be like, um, like aesthetically and if I'd like them or not. And then I can decide whether or not to go full scale. Is that it? So for anyone who's uh, been watching the, the vlog so far and hasn't seen the original chair, this is, this is it. Um, and I made it for a class uh, in school that I was, I was doing a furniture making class in MIT. So yeah, so I had to finish it for the class and obviously, I mean, it turned out pretty nice, but there's lots of things that I don't necessarily like about it. For instance, the chair is just sitting in there, sitting on the cross beams, and it's kind of weak in that direction, so I want to uh, investigate that a little more. And if you look at the feet here, um, I've used mild steel which I bent with a rosewood torch and I bent them, I bent it around into this U shape to uh, clamp to the boat or to hold the bows together. It is kind of a nice detail but it, it meets the ground uh, at a point here which like damages our, our beautiful white floor. Um, and it's the same at the back here it meets the ground at a point. Um, so like the nature of the chair is when you sit into it, it flexes. Um, and obviously that's what I want, but I don't want the steel like damaging people's floors and I don't want it meeting the ground at a point. So what I'm thinking about for this detail is that it's gonna, maybe I'll lose the metal, the metal bracket and it'll um, sit on the ground at a, like a flat point here. And then for the back, for the back uh, foot, I'm gonna have a curved wooden piece so it can like gently slide on whatever surface it is, wood, carpet, or, or tile, or whatever. Um, then these cross beams, I just, which I explained in a video before, I just glued them to the underside of the bow, and like I shouldn't have, well I shouldn't have done that for a start, and also I shouldn't have brought the beam all the way out to the edge, because you lose this kind of sweep, it kind of distracts from the, the really nice sweep of the bow. So. I'll, whatever I do decide to do for the, for the cross beams, I'll probably retract or bring this beam back in an inch or two so you read the edge of the beam much more clearly. Um, yeah, that's it. So I've been like 3D printing little models this week to test out different shapes for the bow. Um, I'm going to do this original shape, I'm going to do smaller shapes. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's it. Ding! Okay. When you get your 3D prints back, they come with this kind of uh, border around them and it's called a brim. And the reason why it does that is it kind of serves as a platform for the print to adhere to the base. So if you printed them kind of like this without the brim, as the plastic, as the PLA is being laid down uh, and it cools, it tends to contract and the print will warp. So this little uh, border kind of sticks to the bed of the 3D printer and it keeps the print flat but it's kind of annoying because then you have to uh, like peel it off and you have to like kind of sand the edge of the, of the print to get it perfect. Uh, but that's what I'm gonna do now. Good. <laughs> 